Have you ever thought about who the richest queens in the world are? From the mountains of Lesotho to the palaces of Europe, these remarkable women have built their wealth and reputation on their own. So who are these queens whose wealth rivals that of kings today? As we explore this interesting world, imagine meeting Queen Mazanet Mahato Siso of Lesotho, whose influence goes far beyond her mountain kingdom. And then there's Queen Wania, whose name is known worldwide. She's a queen changing the story of power and charity in the Middle East. These are just the beginning. Come with us on an adventure to learn more about these stunning queens' lives and wealth. Number 10, Jetson Palmer. Meet Queen Jetson Palmer, a remarkable figure from Bhutan who captured hearts worldwide as the beloved wife of King Jigma Kesar Namgal Wingchuk. Their union in 2011 marked her entrance into the esteemed royal Wingchuk family at 21. Often referred to as the Dragon Queen of the World, she now is the youngest queen consort globally at 32. Too. Apart from her significant royal position, Queen Jetson Palmer possesses a net worth of approximately $1 million and enjoys an annual salary of $32,000 from the Bhutanese government, which generously covers her expenses. Beyond her wealth, she radiates immense adoration and enjoys a celebrity status not only in Bhutan, but also across the globe. Directing our attention to the next queen, we have number 9, Queen Mezanet Mahato Siso of Lesotho. Only a few people are familiar with this small, hilly country, tucked away and surrounded by its much bigger neighbor, South Africa. It's called Lesotho. What's interesting is that when Mazanate Mohato Siso married King Letzi III of Lesotho, she became the queen of the place. She was just 24 years old back then. She's made a name for herself. People know her for being passionate about important stuff like making people aware of social issues and doing a lot of charitable work. Regarding money matters, her net worth isn't exactly pocket change. It's somewhere between 2.5 to 5 million dollars. Now, here's a cool thing. They get regular payments from the government of Lesotho, which adds up and makes a significant part of what they bring in. Next up, number 8, Queen Noradom Mononith. Let me introduce you to someone pretty special, the Queen Mother of Cambodia. She got married to King Noradom Shihamoni way back in 1955. She was the sixth wife of the king, which is quite something. But even more interesting is that she's often considered the most powerful queen. In 1999, she had this grand coronation, and that's when she officially took on the role of the country's monarch. But here's the thing. Even before becoming Queen Nora Dom Mananith, she was really into politics. From 1993 to 2004, she was the queen consort of Cambodia. That's kind of like being the king's right-hand queen. She once gave the Cambodian government a huge amount, $1.5 million. And get this, it was for a program called Mind Free Cambodia. Her net worth is six million dollars. A big chunk of that comes from the Cambodian government, which not only helps cover her costs, but also takes care of a lot of other things in the country. And get this, she's 86 years old. All in all, she's one fascinating queen. Let's move on to number seven, Queen Sylvia. Let's talk about Sweden, the small country up in Northern Europe. They have their monarch, you know. Her name is Queen Sylvia. So back in 1972, she was the main hostess for the Olympics in Munich. Quite the big deal. And guess what? That's when she met the king. What's cool is that she wasn't born into royalty or anything fancy like that. Nope, she was good at languages and she worked as an interpreter. So she ended up marrying King Carl the 16th Gustav in 1976. It was like a big step into royal life, joining the family of Bernadotte. Four years later, she became the official queen of Sweden. Her wealth is worth about $10 million. But here's the thing, she's not just about wearing fancy clothes and living in palaces. She's known for doing good stuff, like helping with important social issues. She's got a reputation for that. Even though she's the queen, she's doing charitable things in Sweden and other parts of the world. And guess what? The Swedish government pays the royal family some money annually, about $8 million. And yeah, the queen gets a share of that. Moving along, let's look at number six, the queen of Spain, Leticia Ortiz Roca Solano. There's this amazing woman who grew up in a regular middle-class family. She wasn't born into any royal stuff. Instead, she worked hard and became quite famous as a journalist and news reporter. You might have even seen her on TV, reporting on CNN Plus and Televisión Española. In 2002, while doing her journalist thing and working on a story, she crossed paths with Prince Felipe VI. Can you believe it? That one meeting changed her life forever. Fast forward two years and she married the prince, joining the royal family. And that's not all. She got crowned as the queen of the whole country. Her wealth is worth about $10 million. The Spanish government gives the royal family a nice chunk 
chunk of money every year. It's like a way to support their royal duties and stuff. A part of that money goes to the queen. She lives in the Zarzue La Palace with her husband, the king, their kids, and other royal family members. But what is the exact cost of the palace? Well, that's a bit of a mystery. Shifting our focus to number five, Queen Sonia. Norway's royal family has this incredible member named Queen Sonia. What's cool is that she wasn't born with a silver spoon or anything fancy. Her life story changed when she met Crown Prince Harold in 1959. They fell for each other and started dating, which changed everything for her. They didn't rush into things, though. They took their time, dating for nine years before finally tying the knot. And you know what? That's when Sonia officially became Norway's first queen consort. Now let's talk about her preferences. She loves living in this huge royal castle in Oslo. Talk about living like royalty. She also enjoys traveling on this super fancy yacht called the KS Norsha. Now regarding her wealth, her net worth is estimated to be around $15 million. And here's a neat fact, the king and the queen don't have to pay taxes. Moving forward, let's explore number four, Queen Sutida. Here's a story that sounds like something out of a movie. The current Thai monarch, Queen Sutida. Now she she didn't start with royal privileges. Nope, she grew up in a regular middle class family. But you know what's amazing? Before she became a queen, she had this cool career as a flight attendant. In August 2014, she was appointed the commander of Crown Prince Vajira Longhorn's household guard. That's a big deal. She was in charge of important stuff like security. And she didn't stop there. She's also the King's Guard Special Operations Unit Commander. Now, fast forward to 2017. Something magical happened. She was officially made the King's Consort and guess what? Love was in the air. In 2019, she married the king and became the queen of Thailand. It is thought that she is worth about $35 million. And here's the interesting part. She gets her wealth from the royal treasury, as commanded by the king. It's like a royal allowance. Now let's move our focus to number three, Queen Margaret II. Queen Margaret II is not just a queen. She's also like the big boss of the Danish royal house. She's part of the royal family of Denmark, and everyone else in this this fancy family is known as a prince or princess, except for her. She's the queen after all. Denmark doesn't have a king. Even her husband, who you'd think might be the king, is called Prince Heinrich. Now get this, she's quite the castle owner. She's got not one, not two, but a total of nine castles all over the world. Can you imagine having your castles? But here's the fun part. Even with all those castles, she and Prince Heinrich spent their entire lives in this grand place called the Amelianborg Castle in Copenhagen. Hagen. The Danish government pays her around $10 million every year. It's like her royal paycheck, you could say. Skipping ahead, we have number two, Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. She's 51 years old and is even the special advocate for inclusive finance for development under the UNSG. That's a super important role. In 1999, she met Prince Willem Alexander and they hit it off. After three years of dating, they got engaged. But here's where it gets really interesting. She used to be the queen, but then she decided to step down. And you know what happened next? The prince, who's now her husband, became the king. She didn't disappear, though. She became Queen Maxima. Her net worth is around $300 million. The Dutch government cares for her and the other royal members. They give her a pretty nice amount each year, around $49 million. Plus, they cover all the expenses related to being the king and queen of the country. So Queen Maxima's life combines important roles, a hefty paycheck, and a royal title that's hard to forget. And now without lingering, let's uncover number one, Queen Rania. Queen Rania is like a superstar in helping others and making a difference. She's known for her good looks, but even more for her big heart. She's all about doing good things for people. Back in 1993, she married King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein of Jordan. That's when she became part of the royal Hashemite family. So when there are big official events, she represents the family, like a royal ambassador. But that's not all. She's got this special connection to the Queen Rania. Rania Foundation and other groups that work hard to make the world a better place for everyone. She's a queen who's not just about the title, you know. Her net worth is estimated to be around a whopping $558 million. The Jordanian government ensures she, the king, and other royals get a good amount of money from the national treasury yearly. It's like their royal allowance. And imagine this. They live in this stunning palace called Al Makar. It's worth millions and millions of dollars. So Queen Rania's life is like a blend of helping others, a massive net worth, and living in a palace that's fit for a queen. Can the stories of these wealthy queens inspire a new generation of leaders, showing that royal titles can also be platforms for meaningful change and influence? Let us know in the comments below. 
And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications to stay updated with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.